Today we're going to talk about a few different topics that I'm so excited about. Defining personal leadership. You're like, what is that, Justin? What are we talking about? Um, so in order to help people, in order to really make an impact and make a difference, I find it's first to search within yourself. I know, Dr. Phil time, here we go. Here we go, Oprah, right? So I watch her new network, it's pretty awesome. You should too, it's called Super Soul Sunday. Hello! So anyway, defining personal leadership. So first, it's about defining who you are, right? And that's a pretty powerful statement. Who are you? What makes you you? What makes you tick? Do you wake up in the morning and say, I'm excited to do what I do today? It could be going to class, it could be a part-time job. No matter what you're doing, what is it that when you wake up, you know you're excited about? What you're most passionate about at the end of the day? And so I find that personal leadership to me is taking ownership over your life, right? Because it's easy in our daily hustle and bustle Right, getting ready in the morning, my hair is just a mess always. Um, and, but the only person I can really look at to blame for or to, to, to associate the things that happen to me is the person I look at every day in the mirror. And sometimes that's scarier than others, right? But at the end of the day, I know I'm responsible for my life, right? And I always like using this phrase, because this is just, and, and follow along if you can, just visualize it with me. Here we go, visualization. If you have to close your eyes, just do it. I know some of you will laugh at you, but it's okay. Just close your eyes and be like, okay. You are the driver in the car of life on the highway of self-discovery. Okay, let me repeat that in case you were following Steve or texting. You are the driver in the car of life on the highway of self-discovery, meaning nobody can take responsibility for your life besides you, right? And that can be a scary thing. Right? Because when you know you are in that, in that cockpit, right? you are the pilot, you are that driver, that you have to take responsibility. So what does that mean? That means first defining who you are, discovering what you're most passionate about, and having the courage to take responsibility and do something with it, to amplify who you are, amplify your inner creative life energy. right? And so that way you can't blame your guidance counselor or your teacher or your friends that you hang out with or even your parents for the situation that you're in. Because no matter where you come from, no matter what you're in, whatever, what class you're in or what grades you get, no matter who you are, you guys can move to that next level. You guys can amplify your voice. You can amplify your life's purpose once you discover it. So to me, personal leadership is just that. So before you can help other people, you gotta help yourself, right? And it sounds selfish, You're like, well, what, Justin, I just wanna volunteer at the soup kitchen. Isn't that good enough? Don't I get a gold star at the end of the day? Well, that's great, you can do that. But until you've gotten your own house in order, it's really difficult to really give 110% of your energies to other people. So first, self-reflect. First, search within yourself. Discover what you're most passionate about, and you'll know, right? Uh, hopefully it's not just tweeting or texting, but you know what? Go for it. If, if that's your, it, maybe you can be a social media marketing person, right? Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be connected to a job, but that passion could be translated into just about anything that you do, right? And maybe it's a subject matter, right? Maybe you really love history. Who likes history? Oh, everybody, okay. Uh, what about math? Oh, good, because I don't. Um, what about science? Oh good, oh, especially young women. There we go, I like it. Um, we need more <laughs> female scientists, I'm just saying. Um, and female presidents, well that's a whole other thing. Um, but, <laughs> just saying. Um, but so you can connect the favorite subject matter, right, to something that you may not automatically know about, right? Because when I was in school, there were times when I was like, does this really relate to what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life? It doesn't seem like it, right? The dissecting of the frog, really? Am I gonna do that? Is that a thing, right? <laughs> um, you know, ver uh, the thing between a lem versus a limb, and yes, that was like in geometry or something. I don't know what that means. Um, how does that relate, right? And it's so funny because like later on down the road, you realize, wow, I really needed some of that stuff. Maybe not the dissecting of the frog, that's gross. Right, but, I, but, but I, I was able to make connections to maybe my favorite subject matters to what I actually was able to achieve later, 
right? So maybe that history class that I really paid attention to um, because the teacher had a vote, I mean, no, the subject matter was really great. And um, I was able to make those connections to that my favorite history class into now my job as a legislator. So, and I wouldn't have known when I was sitting in history class paying attention to the government section that I was gonna do that later. I just knew I really liked it. Right? And the same thing for you. Maybe you maybe you discover something you just are a little paying a little bit more attention to to something else. Right? You maybe not love it, but you like it more than something else. That can be the start. It's like a ripple, right? It's like Pocahontas. You should watch it. It's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a little pebbles like woo 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 woo, and then John Smith like, mm -hmm, that's right. That's not a ripple, right? So um, <laughs> I like Pocahontas. The songs are great. Colors of the Wind. It's a thing. It's on my iPod. So, so, but it starts like that small, right? It starts like that ripple, and then you start to get more and more interested in it, and maybe that's gonna be the major that you have in college, or maybe that's a minor that you have in college, or maybe that's just something that you like to do on the side, but it might start small, but get larger. So it's about finding what you really enjoy, right? And then moving on to that next level, but you have to start somewhere. Um, and, and finding what that what drives you sometimes leads you to what you're most frustrated about, right? And, and this may seem like a negative thing, but I find it you can channel into something productive. So, for instance, I'll give you a quick story. Here we go. <laughs> I hope you're sitting down. All right, you are. Um, so, I was uh, in high school, and I was really interested in one of the classes I was taking was TV productions class. How cool is that? Everybody should have one. If you don't have it in your school, we gotta work on that. Um, anyway, so we were we were running the student television productions class uh, program, and I was doing a show. I was an anchor uh, on our local uh, public access station, and we ran it out of the high school. And I was interviewing a state representative candidate, and we had a really good interview. But the, when the lights turned down, right, and the cameras were off, we were getting pretty heated into something. Probably something we disagreed with, but that was okay. But at the end of the debate, she asked me a question. She said, Justin, how old are you? And I said, 17, because I was 17 at the time. And she said, well, you can't vote yet, so your opinion does not matter. Oh, oh snap, right? You're like, oh, no, she didn't, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I highlight that because that made me frustrated. Right, as it might be you, right? If you were in that situation too, you'd be like, no, I, what do you mean I can't have a voice yet? When you turn that magic number of 18, you don't just magically know the difference between Democrats and Republicans and how to register to vote and what you're supposed to do and how to be an educated citizen in this global society that we live in. Hashtag. Um, so that was my level of frustration. I was frustrated that I felt youth voices were not being heard. I felt we were being shut out of the process. So my frustration turned into activism, right? So I channeled that frustration uh, into my work on the State Board of Education, ha HALA, right? There's a lot of Hopi alums in the State Board of Education program. I just want to say that right now. Um, and I was happy to kick that off, by the way. It was really fun. Uh, but even there, there was problems because we didn't have the right to vote on the State Board of Education. They put two youth on there, right? And oftentimes, they tried to shut up the student members. And I even got in trouble. I got sent to the principal's office a couple times, right? Because I want to make change happen. I don't want to sit around. I mean, you can be sitting. But I don't want to sit around and, and, and not do something. If you're going to put me on a board, I want to make change happen, right? And the same thing with you. I want to make do something with my life. I want to actually change some things that need to be changed, especially in the education system. And oftentimes, they'd be like, Justin, we're going to kick you off the board. I was the first student appointed, but I'm gonna, they're going to kick me off the board. I'm like, OK. You do that, they didn't. But uh, those, it, it, to me, it highlights that level of frustration I had with the system, right? With people saying, I'm not good enough, I can't make a difference because of my age, right? And how often are we put in those situations where we feel stifled, where we feel put in a box, right? Channel that frustration. It could be a frustration about just about anything, but channel that into something that you can turn into a passion a life's purpose, right? And so that eventually, even though I wanted to be a reporter and I went to school for reporting, I eventually got so frustrated because my blood pressure is already through the roof. And so I just got so frustrated. I'm like, well, you know what? Why can't I change the system? Why do I have to just accept that the system is broken? 
Why do I have to accept that young people can't have a seat at the table? Why should I just allow that? Why should I wait for somebody else to do that when I know it's not going to happen? Right? So at that point, I had to make a decision. What do I do about it? Why not me? Why can't I be that agent of change? Why can't I be that person that steps up to raise our collective voice to try to make that difference and that impact on society? And that was a hard decision because that's shifting my entire life around something I was frustrated about, but something I felt very strongly about, right? And so sometimes there'll be situations in your life where you might be able to do just that, right? You're super frustrated, and it might be tied to something that you're just fired up about, and then who knows, maybe you can actually do something with that. So be thinking about what does it that steams your clams, right? What steams your clams, right? And if you think about that visual, number one, you might be hungry, but number two, you might get excited about what the future holds. Um, but sometimes along life's path, you can't wait. And when you can't wait, sometimes you have to create your own opportunities, right? So for instance, when I decided to run for office, I didn't get checked that with anybody. I didn't like call up to the Democratic Party and said, I'm running for office. I didn't check with anybody. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm upset. I'm fired up. I'm passionate about this. I'm going to make a difference. So I filled out the paperwork and told everybody afterwards. Now, that didn't make a lot of people happy because you're supposed to go through a certain, certain process, uh, kiss certain feet, ew. And so and I decided that's what I was going to do. And, and so in that situation, I created my own opportunity. I was just going to do that because I believed in it wholeheartedly. Um, you know, one of my other hats that I wear is I, I'm a small business owner. I, I do a lot of PR work and marketing work for clients. That, again, been applying for a gazillion jobs, and when the jobs were coming, I said, well, what am I going to do with that? You know, I'm not getting a job to supplement income because we get paid $11,000 a year as a legislator. Holla! Right? So I said, I really love being a legislator. I love making a difference, but I have to also make a living. So at the same time, I said, I can wait around and just twiddle my thumbs and just say, well, darn, I'm not getting the job opportunities, or I can create my own opportunity. So I started my own business. It's much easier than you think, um, especially if you're doing sort of services like I'm doing. LLC, it's like a form. You know? so, so feel like, it, I mean, there's obviously, it's a lot of work. But, but, but in, in, the, in the context of what you can achieve in a, in a, in a short amount of time, you can actually do that. Uh, same thing, I was frustrated in my community, in my area, for a lack of collaboration between all the nonprofits. So how many of you may have like a Rotary Club, Alliance Club, any civic groups in your community, not just on, on your school campus, but probably heard of some organization in town, maybe? Yeah, so great, so a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of communities have different civic groups. Well, in my area, I felt like nobody was really communicating. Right? There's all these great civic groups, but they're sort of in their silos, right? They're sort of like doing their own thing. So I was on a board of directors of a, a certain nonprofit, and I really wanted to, to kind of navigate this nonprofit to do more, right? It was sort of doing the same old thing every single year, you know, sing song routine, and I just didn't feel like they understood what we needed to do to move forward. And I felt stifled. Again, see that word stifled? I'm feeling stifled in that position, in that, in that role. And I said, okay, at a certain point, I need to take my skill sets, my passion elsewhere, and apply it into something else. So I, cre again, created my own opportunity and started a, my own 501c3 nonprofit organization. Now, that was a lot more work than the business. Um, IRS, it's a thing. And so, <laughs> and so I started the Stockholm Bay Center for Civic Engagement. And now we have our own office space out of our Chamber of Commerce Welcome Center, and we're working on creating a volunteer kiosk where people can come and sign up for area nonprofit uh, volunteer opportunities. So, and we're working on expanding scholarships and programs. And that's just my volunteer, I don't get paid for that. But, but I, I do that because, again, I was frustrated, and I channeled that into something that I really believed in. So, so that might happen in your own life, where, again, you, you might have a situation where the opportunities are not coming to you. And it can get frustrating in and of itself, whether it be trying to get into the right school, trying to get scholarships to pay for that school, right? Or later on down the road, trying to get jobs or even volunteer opportunities. Maybe you still are feeling stifled that you can't make the change you're wanting to see in the world. And that's a pretty big thing. 
right? And there'll be people throughout your whole life that tell you, and they're maybe telling you right now, mm-mm, you can't do it, right? What's your name? So Sophia might be being told, gosh, Sophia, you're not good enough, right? Somebody might be telling Sophia, you can't make a difference. Those naysayers in your life, and it might be these small things, right? It could be the friend that's kind of like a friend, but not really, you know what I'm saying? Right? Um, and you don't realize it really. Like if you, look, you don't stop and take a look at and evaluate who is around you in your friend group, even in your own family. And I, and I say this and sometimes people, but just in their family. It doesn't matter. If somebody is bringing you down, if somebody is not lifting you up, they don't need to be a part of your life. And it doesn't mean you have to be mean to them. It doesn't mean you have to just shun them. It just means that maybe you have evolved past their level. And that has been one of the hardest lessons I had to learn when I was in school, especially in college. I didn't learn this lesson until college, where I just felt like I needed to be a part of a group. I needed to be in the friend group. And, and I just felt like so negative after the end of the day. I felt so drained after I hung out with certain people. And I kept thinking, why? Why do I feel so down? Like you think when you hang out with friends, you feel uplifted. You feel empowered to achieve the next thing. But instead, I felt the opposite. But when I started to surround myself with positive people, surrounding myself with people that were successful, and it, it lifted me up, it empowered me to do better, right? And even people that were more successful than me, I wanted to surround myself by those people because it made me want to do better, right? And there were times when I had to shift away from the people I was hanging out with. It's not an easy transition sometimes. But when you start to self-realize your own surroundings, when you start to internalize what is happening around you, what is happening in you in terms of your own feelings and what your aspirations are, everything becomes a lot more clear. That cloud has been lifted, right? And it sounds cheesy, right? It sounds like an episode of Dr. Phil, but you know, it really does happen. And you might not make that connection now, but as you start to, to go down the road, I, I feel like it will make a lot more sense. And, and so I hope you start to realize that. And I know there are certain dynamics in high school you can't control necessarily, but if you start to at least be thinking about it from that perspective, I think you're going to be in a really good position down the road, whether you're, you're going to college or a trade program, no matter what you do in life. That will serve you well. And to prove those naysayers wrong, to me, I channeled that negativity into something productive. It used to bother me a lot. Justin, there's no way you're going to be on TV. None, 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 none. There's no way you're going to win. You have spiky hair. How are you going to win a public office? I don't know why I use that voice. I just use that voice for naysayers. It makes it a lot more fun, right? <laughs> So if you turn that negativity into that, you know, what Bronx accent, I don't even know what that accent is. Um, but if you turn that into something, not actually funny, but if you turn it into something like, okay, what is it that I need to do differently, right? So especially when somebody does you wrong, or you feel like you're in a bad situation, sometimes it's easy to blame the other person. And in many respects, they're still responsible for that action against you, but not necessarily like you're in a situation and you're like, well, I can blame them, I can give them the power, or I can retain that power internally and say, okay, what is it that I'm doing, right? What is it that, that is creating these situations? How am I reacting? How am I choosing to surround myself with certain people? And, and when you start to put that back on you and you channel it into something productive, that's when you can elevate yourself out of that particular situation. But those things have to happen. You can't just internalize it and say, I'm a terrible person. You have to internalize that and say, okay, what can I do to move forward? What can I do to amplify my life's purpose, my creative energy? And so that little voice that says, Justin, you can't do it, honey, you can't. What are you doing? <laughs> Will at least be silenced or in a funny accent, right? So and it's still going to be there. On some level, you're still going to feel nervous about certain situations. Heck, there's still situations where, you know, when the governor pops up right behind me, I get a little nervous for different reasons. But I still get, you know, it's like, oh, it's like, hello, what are you doing right behind me? Um, so we have fun at the steakhouse. It's a thing. Um, at least I do. God help the rest of them. Um, but anyway. So, but I channeled that negativity, and that was something that was hard because for so long I just felt like, again, I internalized it as it was my responsibility, but I didn't channel it into something productive, 
right? It took me a while to learn that not only do I have to take responsibility for my life, I have to actually do that next step, right? Because it's easy to take responsibility and then say, oh, it's just a terrible life, blah, 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 right? But then if you say, mm-mm, maybe you turn that weird voice, that Brock's accent, and you're like, Justin, you can do it. Yes, you can. Hello, you can do it, right? And then I find that you can, right? Yeah, it might take a little bit of time, but you know, you can do it. And so when you've done a couple of those things, so you recognize your passion, you recognize your internal purpose, you can actually then say, how can I help other people, right? Because that is what we're all here at Hobie about, learning not only about yourself, but how you view yourself in relation to the world and how you fit what your puzzle piece is to the world's puzzle, right? Because that's really what it is. Each and every one of us are an equally sized piece of puzzle, right? Because it's so easy to like put people on different pedestals. Take my title away, it doesn't matter, I'm still like you. <laughs> Take this jacket off, it's hot, right? So it doesn't really matter uh, who the person is. Everybody has an equally sized piece of puzzle. Now where you put that puzzle piece, whether it fits or doesn't fit, maybe there are certain times in your life that piece is just not fitting. It's like, it doesn't go in the thing, right? And then you figure out how it fits. Right? How you fit into the entire world. And maybe that seems too big. So let's take that down a notch. How you fit into your school, how you fit into a club, how you fit into an activity, how you fit into Hobie, right? Each little group you have here, right? How you fit, how you can contribute to your own group on your table. Maybe you really love doing little designs on your table like this girl's doing right now. See? Look at that. See? Mm -hmm. She's paying attention. I'm just kidding. I love you. Um, so. <laughs> But you know, she, that's really good. I couldn't draw that. I can barely draw stick figures, right? So maybe that's the puzzle piece for the day, right? And so when you view yourself in that light, then you can say, how can I use my passion? How can I use my skill sets to change the world? And maybe your world is very small. Maybe it's the table, right? Maybe it's a classroom. Maybe it's an activity. But you could channel that. And, and so I find once you've got your house in order, you can do that. So you've discovered your passion and your purpose. You have the courage to believe in yourself. That's a big thing because you can't just discover it and do nothing with it. So many people I've met, they've discovered what they love to do, and they just feel like their circumstances prevent them from achieving that next level. Even people that you and I might consider successful, they're still not happy with their lives. right? That's why you get celebrities like Lindsay Lohan. Well, she's a mess anyway. But she... You and I might think, okay, well, she's making a lot of money. She must, she has celebrity. She must be doing well. Clearly, she's not, right? She's using substances as a way of putting her feelings away, right? So, but I use that as You can use anybody. I mean, the president of the United States probably has some bouts of depression, right? Is going through some tough things, right? That's why he has grayer, grayer hair as we go along, and. Um, <laughs> And my hair continues to go away. And so it's one of those things where, I, don't know, I just feel like it's spiky though. But anyway, so my point is that throughout life, no matter what level we reach in our own personal mission, there are always going to be times when you feel like, is this enough for me? Right? Am I enough for this situation? And, and the situation, sometimes you, have no, you don't feel like you have a lot of control over. But ultimately, there's creative ways of thinking about your situation to move yourself to that next level. Because I, I promise you, if you really amplify what you are passionate about, whether it be using this mic, or at your table, or in your community, in your state, in your country, you can make that difference. Because I've been told, no, Justin, you can't do that. Right? Even in the state house, we have a group of legislators under the age of 30 have been told, no, you can't do it. Right? This is just the way it works up here. Right? And you've probably been told that in a different context. Right? You gotta just go with the flow. Right? Well, the flow is pretty boring. I want to be the rainbow fish that goes the opposite direction. Right? Because he has a shiny scale. Okay? <laughs> it's fun. It's like glitter. <laughs> Uh, bedazzle that, mm -hmm. okay? So, so what we're trying to do at the state level is trying to make that difference. We're amplifying our youth voice by getting a group of us together that all believe that one thing. So imagine like a group of, just duplicate me 10 times, that's a scary thought, and all trying to talk through one mic. That's pretty loud, right? You're like, I better get some earplugs, right? So that is powerful. When you are amplified, not by just your voice and your passion, but you get a group of you, like these tables, like the room. I mean, just feel the energy in this room. Do you feel the energy? Woo!
and you feel uplifted. And I know when I was in OB, I felt that same way. By the end of the weekend, I just felt so good. I was ready to change the world. I'm ready to do it. But then when you leave, you go through, I call the Hobie depression, right? You miss the people that you've been a part of the program. And that's the challenge that you have, is how do you retain that excitement? How do you retain that, that power that you find within yourself to make it happen? Because that feeling that you feel right here, you can achieve it at any point in your life, at any day. Doesn't matter if you're tired, doesn't matter if you haven't had coffee yet like me. It just matters that you can do it. It's finding what gets you to do that. Right? It could be thinking about Lindsay Wallman. Hello. It could be whatever it is to get you fired up internally to make that change. Maybe it's just getting through a day of school and you're just, I don't know how I'm going to do this today. I'm having a really tough day. And you're like, I want to tap into that holy energy that's inside each and every one. You. It's in you. You're like, it is? Oh, good. Right? It's in you. It's in everybody. It's in you. Right? And so we can tap into that at any time. That's the exciting, it's like a switch. It's like a little switch, like boom, boom. It's like me sticking my, my finger in a light socket. Pretty scary, it looks, it's up there, hello. But, but you know, you can tap into that internal energy at any time because it's yours. It is yours and you can do it at any time. And when you feel like you have that power, you have unlimited potential at that point, unlimited opportunity because you can do it. And I'm a prime example of it. I decided I was frustrated with something, and I just try to make it happen. And it, sometimes it's not always that easy. Sometimes you have to put in some work. But when you're excited about it, when you feel internally you just can't sit down, you're like, I gotta move around, right? I was always fun in school. I can't sit. What are you doing, right? So, <laughs> and, and I even have trouble sitting in the same. I'm like, I just want to do something. I want to get involved. I want to do something. I want to make change happen. I want to amplify our collective voice. So that's what I like to do, but maybe you find something else that gets you going. But you have that power to harness it, that unlimited potential. And I'm so excited about our, this generation, our generation collectively, because we can do that. We, we have been cracked on too many times to be told we can't do something. I want us to prove them wrong. I want you to prove those naysayers wrong. That you can achieve that level of success. You can achieve victory in life, whether it be achieving health, happiness, love, whatever it is that gets you going in every single day. Whatever you are passionate about, whatever you love, you can do that. Don't let anybody tell you different. Because each and every one of us are an equally sized piece of jigsaw puzzle, right? <laughs> so, wrapping up, I just have to say that I'm so proud of each and every one of you. And I know no matter what you decide to do in life, you can make a change, you can make a difference, no matter what job you do, no matter what you're passionate about. Because each and every one of you are here for a reason. It's discovering what it is and having the courage to actually do it. Thank you.